Building an Airplane. Building an Airplane, Jenny Lynn. My father built the very first modern airplane by a Chinese in China. He not only built that airplane, but when the time came to test that airplane, he climbed into the cockpit with my uncle Tom, and he told the pilot, if I die, then two of the Lin family will die. But if you die, only one of your family will die. And so they proceeded to go and turn on the airplane, and it sped forward, and there was this remarkable moment when it took off. That was the culmination of many years of preparation by my father. My father's family was very poor. His father lost all his teeth because he loved to eat sweets. And he dreamed of becoming a magistrate in China, but he failed all the civil service exams. And then eventually he had his leg amputated. So because he came from such a poor family, he couldn't afford for my father to get an advanced education. But there was one possibility, and that's if he could win a scholarship to the U.S. in competition with all the other Chinese students at universities. And so he took a chance with that, a three-day exam, and amazingly, he, he was the very best student. So he won a three-year scholarship to come to the U.S. And in that scholarship, he would study at MIT for two years to learn about theories of aeronautical engineering. But he realized very quickly that this didn't qualify him to do the practical side of actually manufacturing the parts for an airplane or um, all, the, all the basic practical issues. So he he decided, he made a deal with airplane factories in the U.S. He would work at this airplane factory for free as long as he could go from station to station to see how each individual part was made. And so when he returned back to China, he was the only one among all those scholars who had the qualifications to make an airplane. And so they assigned him to do a lot of the jobs. And at the time, Japan was at war with China. Japan was bombing all the different areas of China. So if they built a plane in an airplane hangar, it would get bombed. So they began to look all around the countryside for places where they could conceal making the airplane. And they found this cave and amazingly, this cave was huge. It had actually three separate caves. And they decided they would build the airplane in this cave. And remarkably, um, this is his crew. And um, he, this cave was really in a very remote part of China. There really wasn't uh, any kind of electricity there, so they had to add generators there. They bought all these machines there. Um, there were no sources of, of uh, kind of wood to make the fuselage, so they'd cut down trees. Um, my father would contract malaria during the time because there were lots of mosquitoes. And my mother was pregnant with my brother, Robert. And so they decided it was very unsafe to go have the baby near this cave. So my mother remembers taking the train to see her mother in Hanzhou. 
and she would have the baby in Hanzo. And along the way, when she was on this train, the Japanese would bomb that train, and so she would flee into the fields to escape that bombing. And miraculously, she went to Hanzo and had my brother Robert. Also, there was almost no food there. My, my father, with malaria and a fever, would shrivel down to skin and bones. But he talks about always carrying a piece of fat in his pocket because he was very proud. And when he went out to see the other people that were working on the plane, he would take that piece of fat out and rub his lips so his lips would shine and give the illusion that he had eaten meat that day. All this happened while he was being harassed by the bureaucracy of China. All the officials had no idea what he was doing. And so they'd constantly come by and say, when's the plane going to be done? How come you're taking so long? You're not, you're not according to our schedule, which they had no idea what a real schedule was to make an airplane. In his studies at MIT, he had heard that in order to make a plane and really test it, you had to have a wind tunnel. But there was no wind tunnel near that cave. So he said, I'm just going to go ahead and use the sky as my wind tunnel. Some of my uh, professors at UCSD who remember this story said that they took the oil drums and cut them up and beat them flat to use for the outside of the airplane. Later on, um, after building the airplane and succeeding, my father's company would be hired in England. And so they would go to England uh, with his company, highly qualified to build airplanes with another company in England. And my father had the status of an officer, so he had access to the officers club in England. And so when he walked into the officers club, he found out that there were all these officers gambling, playing all kinds of poker games. And so my mother would go into that officers club and she would play poker there, something called high-low poker, which I'm unfamiliar with. And she would make tons of money. She's incredibly lucky. She, <laughs> she won all this money. And then with all this money, uh, an officer could buy an automobile. And at the time, none of the English citizens could buy an automobile. So they would buy an English Ford. And here's a picture of the English Ford with my brother and sister and my father. And when they decided to go to the US, uh, they, just, they sold that English Ford for a lot of money, and they used that money to buy passage on a boat from there to the US. And my mother would be pregnant with me at the time they're on this boat, and then we would land in Manhattan, and then the doctor uh, in Manhattan would charge all this money. My parents couldn't afford it. They just said, I'm sorry, I can't pay. So that's the story. So. You might ask, what did I learn from this story? Because my father loved telling me this story. I didn't have any, you know, parents nowadays, they have all these picture books and children learn stories. The only story I learned was the story of my airplane, my dad's airplane. My mother never quite spoke English. So that was the only story I learned. And I, my father loved telling me this story. He'd gesticulate and, you know, is the plane going to take off? And you can imagine at four years old hearing this story. And what I came away with is how many risks they took. You know, it could have easily been that, you know, my father could have died from malaria. He could have gone, done the scholarship and not learn how to make an airplane. He could have a fever, the plane could have crashed, my mother could have gotten killed on the train to her mother's place. I learned that 
it's so important to take risks to fulfill on your dreams in life. And then also growing up, uh, I went to all white elementary, middle and high schools. And I was bullied quite a bit for being the only Asian in those schools. And I'd hardly hear anything about Asian history. I heard about the 13 colonies. I heard about Thomas Jefferson and George Washington chopping down the tree. None of that resonated with me. But I realized that through all that bullying, my anchor was this story. I had a personal story. This was my DNA that was passed on from my father. Thank you.